VLANs and trunks. If you want to take the CCNA exam or you're interested in networking, VLANs and trunks are everywhere. These two concepts are pretty difficult to understand. My goal is to spend like 15 minutes and talk you through everything that you need to know to get started with VLANs and trunks. Trust me, you will understand these concepts very well in 15 minutes. Before we jump into a switch, imagine that we have eight locks. Yes, eight locks, eight doors. We have three keys. Key number one, two and three. It's very easy to spot that key number one can be used uh, over here, lock number one and number six. Key number two can be used for number three and number eight. Then this flat one can be used for number two and five. Yeah, that's easy. Marius, what do you want from us? Yes, locks, what's wrong with you? Stay with me. Now, when you think about this big lock number four, do you agree with me that all three locks are okay to be used? Yeah, they will fit. Why is it important? Because this is exactly how VLANs work. When you think about the switch, we have eight ports. Switch number two, eight ports. Six PCs. PC1 is connected to port one, PC2 is connected to port three, and so on. We are all connected. Now there are some colors, blue and green PCs. Instead of logs, we have colors now. What's more, we will say that port one and three are in VLAN 25. What does it mean? It's like a lock. This means that when you think about port number one and three, only devices that in a way have a key VLAN 25 can use it. On switch number two, we have VLAN 25, the blue one on port number seven, and then the green one on port number one, two, and four. That's very easy. One thing to remember, actually these PCs have no idea that they belong to anything like a VLAN. Why would you use a VLAN in the first place? What's the goal? The goal is to isolate these devices. Do you agree with me that when you think about switch number two, we have green PCs and blue PCs. We want to isolate them. This means that green PC number one cannot talk to this blue PC by default. We want to isolate them, group these devices. That's the idea behind VLANs. We want to group these devices. The way it works is that a switch has in a way a special key, a tag, that will be attached to every message that is sent from a device. These end devices have no idea about VLANs, yes. This blue PC has no clue, oh, I am using VLAN 25, no way. VLANs are configured and managed by switches only. And the devices are not aware of anything around VLANs. This is a good thing. They shouldn't. Your goal is to configure a switch and then an end device should not be aware of anything around VLANs. I hope it makes sense. Now let's make it more interesting. Let's connect switch one and switch two. We grab a network cable and connect port eight and port eight. We will call it a trunk. A trunk means that I will allow both green and blue messages to go through this port. There is a special name for these messages, a frame. The idea is that port number eight can accept two kinds of messages, green and blue ones. Port number one can accept green messages only, yeah? Port two green and so on. Let me just put it here. So port number one over here, it's blue messages only, blue messages only, green, green, green and blue. Now, now we go back here, we can see blue means VLAN 25, 
it's just a number anything you want to go for 25 or 277 it's up to you it's just a number something that allows you to group these devices that was easy now let's open packet tracer i hope you know packet tracer packet tracer is a special app that you can download from cisco to play with network devices if you do not know packet tracer feel free to leave a comment i will be very happy to record a lecture and show you how to start using this application i will assume that you have a very good idea how to use it what i mean is well you know how to open it how to add network devices and start some basic configurations here is the topology it's exactly the same as the one that you saw a minute ago we have two switches six pcs we want to make sure that we can send a message between these devices i have not configured anything yet the only thing is an ip address on pc1 and pc5 when i go here i type ipconfig 192.168.25.1 on this pc One nine two one six eight dot twenty five dot five. Now the question is, can I actually ping PC one without making any changes? This is a really good question. Let's give it a go. Ping one nine two one six eight dot twenty five dot one. I am sending a message to PC one. As you can see, it's up and running. Okay, Marius, so what's the point? There is no need to configure any VLANs. It's up and running, job's done. Not really. This is thanks to Cisco, because believe it or not, but these switches are in a way designed to be plug and play. Trust me, there is no VLAN 25. There is nothing on these switches. I can even show you. There is absolutely nothing on these switches. It's here and here nothing there is no host name nothing if you want to verify all these settings let me move it here you type show vlan the show vlan commands shows a really cool table that summarizes everything you have to know about vlans by default all ports belong to vlan 1 this is why I can ping across this topology. All ports belong to one VLAN. A VLAN ID is just a number. These switches do not really care. VLAN 1, 25, 77. As long as everything belongs to one VLAN, I am good with it. Thanks to it, I can actually ping PC5 from PC1, PC1 from, from PC5, and so on. You have to remember, that these two devices have to be in the same subnet pc5 and pc1 let's go to switch one let's give it a name because that should be switch one here we go i'll assume that you have some basic understanding of uh, cisco ios and how to configure these devices nothing fancy here now VLANs. I have port F01 and F03. These ports should belong to VLAN 25. Let's create VLAN 25 first. I type the VLAN 25 command. Give it a name, whatever name you want. Let's say VLAN 25. That's it. VLAN 25 has been created. When I type show VLAN, you, you will see that VLAN 25 is in the list, but there are no ports assigned to VLAN 25. We can fix it. Interface F01, switch port, access VLAN 25. I will make it really simple here. No additional commands. Yeah, really simple. The same for F03. 
it's over here. This port should belong to VLAN 25 as well. Switch port access VLAN 25. When I type show VLAN again, you will see that we have two ports associated with VLAN 25, F01 and F03. OK. Let's go to switch 2 now. Here I will focus on F07 first. Well, first VLAN. VLAN 25, name VLAN 25, interface F07, switch port access VLAN 25, show VLAN, here we go. Now let's go back to PC5, can I ping PC1? Can I ping PC1? I cannot. Why? What's wrong? It's just, you know, VLAN 25, VLAN 25 here. So what, what's wrong? Your topology is broken, Marius. No, it is not. What about this link over here? This link. This link has no idea it's okay to send VLAN 25 across. Yeah? This is not a trunk. We have to let this port know it's okay to allow VLAN 25. By default, VLAN 1 is allowed only. It's not good enough for us. We have to allow VLAN 25 as well. We go under port F08 and we say switch port mode trunk. Please be a trunk. A trunk means allow all VLANs. Let's do the same on switch D1. Interface F08, switch port mode trunk. Please be so nice and become a trunk for me. A trunk means allow all VLANs. To verify it, we type show interfaces trunk. Take a look. Port F08 is a trunk. We are allowed to send all VLANs across. Here we have two active VLANs, VLAN 1 and 25. OK. What about now? What about now? Come on. Yes, I can ping it now. Why? This PC is in VLAN 25. This port is allowed to send VLAN 25 traffic. This PC is in VLAN 25. I hope this lab makes sense. This is really an introduction to VLANs and trunks, but please make sure that you recreate this lab to make sure that you understand how it works. If you have any questions, any comments, any requirements, any topics you'd like me to cover, feel free to leave a comment. I will be very happy to help you.